and it's on. Hey, good morning from Walla Walla, Washington. Dee Dee here, standing at the fabulous Monarch 10WE lathe. And I just really enjoy this machine. It puts a smile on my face every time I come in here early in the morning. I come here early in the morning because I'm in it to win, right? Okay, guys. Now, <laughs> I know, I know, I know these uh, classroom type uh, sessions, like the last video on uh, social adjustments, are really hard to get through, and I try to keep them short, okay? Now, <laughs> this one here, I, I'm going to call it in the dynamics of precision. And I'm here to help you do close tolerance work. And you can take what I show you here and apply to your machine. And uh, the, uh, there, there's one machine, uh, I like all lays, and, uh, but there's one I just really didn't like too much, and that's that Dunlop 109. I, just, I don't like that one. But... I know there's people that have made uh, miniature nine-cylinder radial engines on it with a lot of patience. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about uh, this particular lathe here and, uh, and uh, this style or this brand. Um, and I hope you're all doing good. Okay, I'm going to take the camera off and, and uh, we're going to do a fun comparison, okay? There we go. Okay, so the comparison I'm going to make is uh, this. This, uh, uh, I've been married for over 40 years, and my wife is a very good musician. And uh, many, many years ago, I bought her this guitar, and this is just a fabulous guitar. It's uh, uh, a Fender Stratocaster. Mary Kay, gold and blonde. And this is one of the best investments uh, uh, I ever made because my wife's uh, played me beautiful music ever since. Just a wonderful thing, isn't it? Okay, now this guitar here is pretty famous and it's like, yeah, it's really looked down upon to take a work of art like this and modify it, cut it up, and do different things that people actually do because there's less expensive versions of this guitar. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I like to pick on a guitar a little bit. My favorite uh, guitar player is, uh, was the late Luther Perkins uh, of uh, Johnny Cash in the Tennessee too. And he wasn't a, a technical guitar player, but he did this really interesting uh, percussion things and stuff on a Fender uh, Esquire guitar. Um, but this, uh, the point I wanted to make on this thing here is my wife's a very good, you know, very good musician. She plays uh, piano. She knows every note on the neck on that guitar. And uh, she has, uh, the nuances, you know, like anybody can buy that guitar and, you know, like me, learn three cowboy chords and, you know, do okay. Um, but, you know, to really play that thing, there's just a lot of nuances to it. Okay, so we got this instrument here, too. This is uh, by, uh, you know... I guess any standards, this is absolutely top of the line, what it is. And it's an instrument, it's a precision instrument, and a machine tool at the same time. And I'm going to show you some of those nuances. And I've demonstrated this uh, once before, okay? Now, okay, let's get over here. I'm going to get this out here. Now, this is interesting, too. Now, we're looking at here, this is the... the uh, uh, the Monarch standard for this uh, machine here. Now we're going to go face run out on the spindle is 50 millionths. Taper run out, 50 millionths. Taper hole run out, 50 millionths. Now this is the most interesting thing that most people don't know anything about. Spindle rotational accuracy, 
30 millions. Okay, now what that, what that means is uh, that's uh, pretty close to uh, the roundness of, of the part you're going to get. And you can have a spindle face uh, run out to a certain degree uh, and adjust a four-draw chuck into it so it runs true. One of the things you run into with that is out of balance. But you can actually um, get the accuracy of rotation is separate from the spindle nose run, run out. Okay, the spindle nose run out, you want it as best as possible. But it's the accuracy of rotation is also just critical. All right. Now I'm going to show you something really interesting. So we have this accuracy of rotation um, of 30 millionths of an inch. Okay. And I got a I got a, a test indicator on the spindle here, and I showed this before, but I'm going to show it a little better this time. Let's see if I can. I'm going to do this by hand. And watch that indicator. You see that? I'm pushing it right to zero here. That's a hundred millionths of an inch. And if I really lean into it, maybe 150 millionths of an inch. Okay, with that kind of deflection stuff, well, how can you get that accuracy of rotation? And uh, there's another battle you're going to fight, too, uh, for close tolerance, and that's removing taper, okay? So when that pushes over, let's say your tool pushes that over, and it will, okay? It's going to get bigger on the end. See? You'll push it over, the end will be further over here, and it'll be larger, and it'll taper down like that. So we're going to fight that, okay? Now, this here, deflecting a hundred millionths of an inch. Now, I'm going to put you back on the, uh, on the tripod here, try to, uh, so you can look at me better, right? Okay. You know, <laughs> I'm not very good at this classroom stuff, and you have to realize that I learned this stuff following uh, an old guy named Clarence around, okay? But I'm going to try to teach you a few things. Clarence says good, buddy. He's, uh, he's old. He's very, very old. And he wrote a 1940 knucklehead. Okay. Harley Davidson. That's how I met old Clarence. Okay, now what we have here is uh, a, a Campanola wheel off my custom-built Alex Singer bicycle. And I'm going to spin this thing here, okay? And you've done this. Spin that. Okay, it's a gyro, and it's hard to move. See? You know how that is. Okay, let's put it over here. And the tool is pushing, let's say, on the end of the work. And it's resisting being pushed over, okay? So here's something to chew on. You have a little bit of taper. This thing will push over a, a hundred millionths of an inch. If you speed the spindle up, it'll be less resistance. Or, yeah, you know more of that, uh, this whole thing will become a gyro. And this is quite heavy, you know. Spin it at three or 4,000 RPMs, it's, it's quite a gyro. So if you're, if you're having taper at like 1,500 RPMs, you can kind of get rid of it by speeding the spindle up. And it'll be more resistance to the tool deflection. Now that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Okay. Let's chew on that for a while, and I'll load this video and uh, come up with some more interesting action. Okay, you guys have a good morning. Bye-bye.